in 2020, you even before COVID, you said that you weren't going to tour at all. You wanted to take some time away. How much time do you think you have left in this game, in this music game? <laughs> For Complex News, it's 360 with Speedy Mormon. I'm him, and today we have a very, very special guest in the building. He is the pioneer of the Latino gang. Come on, man. The boy from Medellin, <laughs> Jay Balvin, is here. Thank you, my What's up, man? How are you? Great, and you, man? Great. Thank you so much for having me here thank in this, you, thank in you, this beautiful, beautiful place. Yeah, I can't... you know, shout out to Airbnb, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Airbnb. <laughs> I'm sure it's still super expensive, but this view is phenomenal. <laughs> And, you know, I think back to something you said, you used to paint houses. I did. Many, many years ago. When you think about, you know, painting houses and then now being able to stay in a house like this, what does it all mean to you? Man, you know, we come a long way, you know, like, it's, uh, it just make me, it just make me think about that again, you know, just like, it's really worth it when you really know where you're going, you know, when you have a big dream and you work hard for it. And, uh... And I, I was painting a lot of houses, and now we're painting our our dreams. Yeah, you know. Now you're painting your dreams. Yeah, our own dreams. You know, so it's it's beautiful to see the process. You know, like I knew it. I had it on my mind. Like I always knew that I was gonna be someone who was gonna represent the Latino culture around the world. And I knew it since I was painting houses. You know, like I remember painting houses and be just like singing. I mean, and I know like this song is gonna be a hit one day. You know, and writing the song and just freestyling, and uh, and it was worth it, man. It was it was worth it. It's, it's, we're here. Yeah. Do you still have those painting skills? You think or not? Uh, I suck, bro. Like <laughs> like, basically all the paint job that I did, they made me redo it again. <laughs> and again and again. And again and again. They just used to laugh at me all the time because they were like, Nah, that boy is really into music, man. He's just never gonna be focused painting these walls. But I was, you know, trying to make my, you know, the money to be here and, you know, I was working illegal. I was an immigrant. Yeah. You know, so, so I can understand a lot of the struggle that, you know, the Latino has, you know, gone through. Yeah. That was a long time ago, obviously. Was that, was that around the time where your rap name was supposed to be Scotch Bonnet? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I don't know what they, you know, that's funny, man. My, one of my boys told me, they're like, bro, your name should be Scotch Bonnet. I'm like, what, what, what is that? You know, <laughs> like, that's, that's like a spicy sauce or something. I was like, bro, like, I don't, I don't even know what's that. I don't feel represented by that. Like, what are we going to do? So then I was like, well, my name is Jose, you know, it's J, you know, and uh, Jota in Spanish. And, uh, and my last name is Balvin. So let's, let's do my, my name and my, and my last name. Yeah. And, how J Balvin came. It's a better name than Scotch Bonnet, I'll oh, tell you 100%, that Oh, hundred percent, I think, yes. At least it sounds better to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, when we were booking this interview, your team sent us over just like a little update on like what's up with you and what you've been doing and what's been going on. And they said that 2020 was majorly mixed for you. Like it was a mixed year, like some good, some bad. You went through a lot in 2020. How would you describe what the year 2020 was like? <laughs> For Jose, bro, 2020 was uh, how can I say that, man? You know, it just shows me it, it 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 taught me how vulnerable and how fragile we are, you know. And it showed me what's real, what what's real and what's not, mm. you know. What's what's real happiness and what's not happiness, you know. What what makes me feel, you know, like things like like breathe. Mm. You know that we think is so common, but then COVID come, came and and you start. I had COVID and it almost killed me. You know, it was really bad, really, really bad. You know, my kidney, my 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 lungs, my my liver, and I'm a healthy guy. Like I'm also known because I'm really healthy and I'm I'm I'm, I'm not into drugs. You know, like I respect that. You know, um, but I don't do alcohol. I just you know, I'm, I'm I'm really like kind of different for the game. Yeah, you know? for sure. Yeah, 
So I'm, I'm the guy that is like meditating, you know, drinking water, you know, you don't see me never like going crazy in the streets, you know, and, uh, and that year, and that year, 2020 just taught me that I'm a human being, man. I'm, I'm, I'm fragile and I'm vulnerable, you know, and, and um, it, it was, it was tough. It was tough because like, when, when COVID started, you know, I, I thought it was just, oh, there's something that is just going on in China, you know, like, yeah. this, this, this is not going to get me, you know. And um, from one day to another, boom, I had it, you know, and, and, and I thought I was going to die, honestly. Did you, you know? really truly believe yeah, that? 100%. Yeah, because when they checked my oxygen, that it was low, 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 low 80s, and then they were like, we have to... We might have to take you to the um, to the hospital and just see what's going on, what's going on with you, you know, because I think you're not your lungs are not responding well, you know. So at that moment I was like, oh, like I'm really going to die, you know. And uh, so that taught me a lot, you know, like how value again, what's real, you know, what's what's real, man, like friendship, mm. you know, like hug someone. You know, things that we didn't see before because we, we got we got used to, you know, we got used to see people all the time. We got used to be, you know, uh, in concerts and we got used to fans uh, grabbing you or kissing you like that somewhere. And, and then you're like, I miss that. Like, I miss at least to hug a fan. Or yeah. I, I, I miss to be on a show when it used to be every day. Now it's been... It's gonna be almost two years, you know. Yeah. It's, it's a year and a half, basically, and and we still have to wait a couple of more months, you know, to go back to that. So that's one point. And the other side, you know, I learned a lot about about what about Jose, you know, because I was being caught up on J Bob in life, you know. I, I like I was being focused on work and work and work and work and work, and then when everything shut down, I was like. Oh, so, 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 okay, so what I'm gonna do, like, like, what I usually do, I cannot do it now, no more, not for, not for a while. So I start getting to know me a little bit, that helps me, but at the same time scare me a little bit because I, it was like, it's been like 15 years of my career, almost, and, uh, and I'm just getting to know me as a yeah. human being. So it was kind of frustrated and, and cool too, you know, like yeah. it was like, like I didn't even know what makes me happy, for real, for real, because I did was everything with, with have a number one song or breaking records and stuff like that was happiness to me, you know? And then when you stop and you be like, okay, this is the human being. So what, what makes me happy? Yeah. Because it's no, it's, it's, something different right now so i have to and i'm right now still learning about that how to how to you know uh balance my life between j Bobby and jose and jose yeah yeah 100 so that was 2020 and yeah. now we're a few months into 2021 yeah how has this been for you this year is it has it been mixed has it been good has it been how would you describe it i mean since i got vaccinated bro i feel great because you know i feel I, at least i feel that that i'm not gonna feel the same way i, I felt when you got yeah it. when i had it you know i like i was just desperate i was desperate when i when i heard that the vaccine was out i was like i need to get that if, if you see my eyeball i'm gonna get it on my eyeball <laughs> i don't care you know like because it's, it's, it's one thing is see it on the news, you know? Another, another thing is when you're really feeling that shit, when you're feeling that. And you're experiencing it for yourself. It's, it's, it's two different stories, you know? So when I was catching up with your boys, I was like, yeah, you're vaccinated. Like, we might not, we might not. I'm like, <laughs> I hope you don't get it. Because, <laughs> yeah. because it's a lottery, you know? Sometimes just you don't get uh, symptoms or sometimes you just die. Yeah. It can go either way. We don't know, right? Yeah. So, so like now that, you know, I feel more hope, 
But you guys are blessed here in this country, the fact that you have a lot of vaccines. Yeah, the access to them. The access is, it's, it's just out of this world, you know. So a lot of respect for that because like in my country, Colombia right now, it's just 2% of the people being vaccinated. It's gonna take us two or seven years. So it's sad, Yeah. you know? And, and it just get higher and higher and higher and higher. And I'm like, so basically you just can't do it right now maybe in the States after July, but the rest of the countries basically are sh still shut down. Yeah. So it's like we're here in a bubble right now, a better bubble. A better bubble. Yeah, a better bubble, but still, you know, I used to be in three countries in a day. Yeah. You know, being in the morning in Italy, being in Germany at, in a concert and flying at night to Paris to sleep over for the next show. Right. Now it's not like that. Not, not, not. I not can't even work. imagine that lifestyle anymore. Like being able to just travel and it's just It's weird not to me. To like work. just jumping on a plane to me is weird now. Yeah. I'm like, oh, plane. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> things like that, you know, things like that. And, and, and just crazy. I had, I, uh, Canelo, the, the yeah, boxer. The boxer yeah. yeah. I, I, I went, you know, I, I took him out to the ring. And yeah, I, you performed for him and walked and him I out. And I performed with him, you know, showing one of my first, like, singles to warm up, my G. And it feels weird to see people. It wasn't a lot of people, though, but it was just, I was just like, oh, shit, those people. <laughs> Human beings, like. Yes, but we, we had to go through this to start valuing the simple things that we thought that it was normal. Yeah, took it for granted. That ain't normal no more. You know, it ain't. You know, so it's just weird, man. Yeah, but it's interesting because when Canelo calls, you got to answer the phone. In the documentary, A Boy From Medellin, that's coming out, there's a scene where you're on the phone with Jay-Z. Yeah. What is it like to be on the phone with Hove? Like, what does Jay Balvin and Hove talk about? I mean, about? I think I'm one of the few guys that are being hugged and carried by Jay-Z. Hugged and carried? Yeah, like, and it's been, they filmed that, the Super Bowl. Uh, you, you, you don't see hope like Embracing that. people like that. No, nah. no. Nah. So, like, every time I see a video, I see, I, I see, like, 200 times. I'm like, oh, he hugged me, and he grabbed me. Oh, shit, <laughs> that's JC. You know, and, and it's dope, you know, because, like, I respect him so much, you know. That's, it's really, it's really a huge inspiration, you know, and uh, and uh, he's showing my love, you know. Every time uh, I have the opportunity to see him, it's just like beautiful, man. You know, he's just real, and and uh, and he knows that, you know. I, he knows, he knows, he knows that I that I admire and and, and love what he does. Did you ever tell him that? Of course. Like the last time I saw him, I was like. Uh, man, I love you, man. Like, I love you. Like, I look, I know I don't know you for a long time. I love you, man. I love you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I thought that was rain yeah, for a second. It's, there's blessings. Amen. Blessings is raining <laughs> on us. Um, so, you know, you're a legend in your own right. But Come on, one day, one you, day. You link up with legends, and, and I have to draw attention to the shirt you have on. It's a bull shirt. Um, oh, yeah, when they have the earrings. And, and I heard that there was a time where you spent like four or five hours with Michael Jordan yes. in Paris. Yes. What is it like spending four to five hours with Michael Jordan in Paris? This is what it came out from that conversation. Really? <laughs> yeah, like, uh, I was in Paris and I received a call from Reggie. Shout out to Reggie. He was like, uh, Michael is here. He wants, he, he wants to, you know, talk to you. I was like, and, and, and I know uh, Michael Jordan's wife like uh, Yvette and she's Latina so she tells me at the same time like yo we're here you want to link up I'm like hell yeah your heart dropped like oh no hell I'm going you know so I went there and I had the privilege to talk to him really really for like four hours you know he was smoking his cigar and just telling stories you know and and and, and I remember I told him like yo we're like we're taking so long but make the you know being the first latino to make a journal one you know like what's going on my g we have to make this happen right now he was like wait a minute so he put out the cell phone and done <laughs> i'm like oh, did you really like 
it's done. I was like, no, I like, it's done, don't you see? <laughs> it's done. I was like, yo, Michael, take me. Like, but, but we were, it took me four years to make, to be the first Latino ever to make a Jordan one. Yeah. Because let's say I have to explain what was going on with our music globally, mm -hmm. you know? But the fact that in certain moments, the music is not as loud in, the, in radio, in US radio, mm -hmm. in English, it doesn't mean that we're not in every corner of the USA. Right. You know? And it doesn't mean that if you don't know me, it doesn't mean that we're not, our music is not playing in Russia, Germany, wherever, you know, everywhere, you know? So it took us like four years to make the sneaker because I was like, listen guys, like, this is real, this is global. Right. Like, but it's good, I understand, you know, like, I have to be just like, I don't know, just teaching them about our culture and what's going on with, with reggaeton, you know, and, and finally when I had the, the talk with Michael, Michael was just like, what are we waiting for, man? Like, and he definitely, you know, he, he vibed with me and that was beautiful, you know, I, I feel really privileged. And um, I learned a lot about him and about his discipline. You cannot tell him that, you cannot challenge him to nothing. To anything. Anything. People say like, that he's so competitive, right? But, but, but it's crazy. If you if you with him you t and you have a basketball and you be like, I beat you up, he'd be like, let's go. Because I seen it. <laughs> I was like, this guy's ready always to beat everybody up. You, you know? could see his competitive nature even in that conversation? 100%. 100%. And that's what I love. Like, he, he, he keep it real. Like, he, it's definitely what you see, you know. But I thought he was going to be, like, serious. And he's a funny guy. Really? You know, like, he make a lot of jokes. You know, you laugh because you're Michael Jordan, or you laugh because he's just one guy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but either way, you got to laugh. Way, you know, just, no, but no, he's, he's definitely a, a, a great person, you know. And, and uh, so shout out to Michael Jordan and Yvette, you know, and Reggie and the whole family, Jordan family, you know, they've been amazing with me. And, and yeah, man, that's a privilege, you know, to talk with the been made myself. The GOAT. Yeah. Now you say it took you four or five years because you had to almost prove yeah. why the influence of Latino culture is so important. And now, like you said, you hear it echoing from the corners of Russia and Ukraine and mm -hmm. to Africa. Did you ever think that you'd see a day that people who don't even understand the language of Spanish can vibe out and go crazy for Spanish music? Yes, because when, when I started, I mean, when, when I was a kid, I was, was listening to Jay-Z, Nas, you know, and way before that, I was listening to Criss Cross, mm -hmm. you know, and I didn't know what they were saying, you know? I didn't know what Vanilla Ice was saying. I didn't know what uh, ECE was saying. I didn't know what One Tucson Harmony was saying. I was just vibing, you know? But everybody in Colombia was listening to, to hip-hop, you know? But... And I didn't know what were they were saying. So I was like, if this is possible with English, what is not possible with Spanish? You know? The reason why I learned English is because I wanted to know what they were saying. Yeah, 100%. So, and, and dreaming the day I meet, I will meet Jay-Z, that I can talk to him, mm. you know, or talk to the legends that I always been look up to, like, actually talk to them. Right. You know, not get like, I, like I lost the moment, <laughs> you know, like I, 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 didn't, I didn't take my time to learn English, but <clears throat> I did, you know, so it, it, I, I was like, I'm, I'm going to make the statement that we can make uh, sp Spanish music go global, you know, and, and that was my mindset all the time, you know, all the time. So, yes, any interview that we do, Obviously, you know, English is the biggest, you know, language around the world, you know, but when I perform, it's in Spanish. Yeah. You know, and all my music is in Spanish, you know, and, and all our hits are being in Spanish, you know, but I knew it since the beginning that we were going to make it, you know, we were like, we got to make the statement of the Latino culture, you know, but there's a lot of guys that paved the way for us, you know, Daddy Yankee, Tego Calderon, Wisin Yandel, you know, 
Don Omar, you know, this, it's not that I made it, it's that they paved the way and then, you know, the thing that was hard for me is that I wasn't from Puerto Rico. Right. Which is where a lot of this it's was born from. Yeah. This, this was born in, in Puerto Rico and Panama. So it's kind of like Drake, the fact that it's a guy from Canada. Right. And hip hop started exactly. here in America. Exactly. It's, it's kind of like the same story. You know, like I'm from Colombia and I'm doing reggaeton and people thought that it was a joke. You know, like how he's going to make it? He's Colombian. Yeah. But the, most, the more they were saying that I can't, the more I was like, I'm going to shut, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to shut them up. Yeah, I'm going to shut them up. You know, I'm, I'm going to prove them they're wrong, you know, and, and we're here, you know, yeah. we're here. And, and I still, still have a lot of things to prove. You know, I still have a lot of people that challenge me. You know, I can, I can lie. You know, I still have people that, that sometimes make me doubt, you know, how, how powerful our impact has been, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, man, I'm a human being. Yeah, I, I, sometimes you feel insecure. Sometimes you feel that, you know. But I just gotta keep on going, man. You know, till right till I die. I want to talk a little bit more about those challenges in just a second. But before we leave the idea of this global music now, um, it wouldn't be a surprise if you heard someone today listening to someone your music, to some of your music, regardless of what they looked like. But maybe going back a few years, who was someone that surprised you when you found out that they listened to your music? Like I remember Kendall Jenner was listening to a J Balvin song and they were like, oh my God, Kendall Jenner's listening. Mm -hmm. Who was somebody that you were like, whoa, like this person is listening to J Balvin? Beyonce. Beyonce, of course, was one of the first ones that I was like, blue. I remember, you know, shout out to my Mike because he told me like, you know, uh, what's Blue's favorite song? Was it what? Like, Mi Gente. I was like, what are you talking about? Like, Blue, Beyonce's daughter? Blue Ivy. Yeah, I was like, shit. I was like, no way. You know, and, and, and then, you know, just to see the, the weekend. I remember the first time the weekend DM me. Like, bro, I, 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 can, stop I can stop listening to your album. I'm like, are you for real? Like, uh, is this the real The Wiz? Are you really The Wicked? Like, Abel, like, are you telling me, like, you love my music? You, we don't even know what I'm saying. You know, that, you know, and uh, then I started just knowing more rappers and more rappers that I, that I grew up with, you know, like, for example, like the OGs, you know, like, Jim Jones. Yeah, that's New York. Yeah, yeah you, know, you know what's up with Jim's, you know, Jim Jones is, as a legend, you know, he makes part of the culture. He, you know, part, was one of the flyest moments of hip hop ever. Yeah. You know, the whole Dipset family, you know. So, uh, yeah, uh, Obama. When Obama was like, who doesn't know J. Bobby and, and reggaeton? like reggaeton, yeah. I was like, did he really say that? <laughs> I was like, wait, wait, what, what did he say? Yeah, Obama just said that who doesn't know J. Bobby and reggaeton? I was like, what the f like? I remember it's Obama that. Obama saying that, you know, and, and uh, yes, a lot of people that, that have surprised me, you know, Jamie Foxx, you know, nah, a lot, you know, I, and, and, and I still don't get used to it, you know, like, I think that's part of the magic, that I still, I'm still a fan, Yeah. you know, I'm still, I'm, I, I haven't grown up, man, I, I'm, I'm, I feel that I'm 13, you know, yeah. and, and I just can't, embrace that I'm growing up, you know, I, I feel that I'm 13 years old, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to talk about that in a little while, but um, people come up to you, <clears throat> especially pre-COVID, and ask for photos all the time, and the one thing that everyone knows is that J Balvin will never say no to a photo. You'll always say yes. Yeah, always. Why? Did someone, when you were younger, maybe... Say no, yes. And who was that person? Oof. No, I can't tell you, man. I'm gonna fuck him up. <laughs> but this is so many years later. Yeah, but, but but like, I I remember one day, like, oof. it just feels it feels emptiness when you feel uh, rejected, as they were, yeah. right? Yeah. 
when you feel rejected, like, like no, like. Uh, remember one day it was a basketball player, you know, and uh, but that wasn't with me. That was my best friend, you know. He was like, bro, this this that's my favorite basketball player there. I was like, I don't know, my G, you go ask him for a picture. I, from what I see in the vibe, you shouldn't ask, but I'm telling you, don't do it. And he went so happy, bro, like, hey, man, you know, you mind if you take a picture? Like, no, 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 no pictures, man. And I saw my boy's face. Because I don't want, I want, I don't want to tell about my story because I don't want to put no one in, in, in the spot. But when I saw my boy's face, bro, like, I remember how it felt. And I was like, that's what I told you don't do it. Because I, I know how it feels when you love someone as an artist or as a sport to tell you no, when you feel, this, this is certain, this is something weird about being famous, which I don't feel famous, but people think that they know you. Right, because right? they watch all your stuff. Yeah, they because they watch you, they, you're, you're familiar to them. Your you know? face is on a poster on their wall. Yes, yeah, so, or you know, or they see you on TV, or they see your videos all the time, so they feel like they know you. And it's true, they know the character. They don't know the person. There's people that that are not as nice as you think. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying that I'm the nicest guy. I'm saying I'm a real guy. You know, but since the first day I was rejected by an artist that he told me no, I was like, I will never gonna I will never gonna make someone feel like how you felt the way I felt. Because you feel like emptiness in your chest. And it's like, you definitely really want to cry, me personally. You know, because someone that you look up to or someone that you love, you know, someone that you like, oh, that's, that's the goal, mm -hmm. you know? It's like if I was meeting Michael Jordan that time, I was, and I was, yeah, let's take a picture, we'll say, no. You'd be crushed. Yeah, it'd be so sad to me. So I just can't, my G, I can't say no to a picture. Yeah. I, just, I, I, I cannot sleep. Like, that's what I haven't done. That's why I haven't said no. You can ask anybody, any fan. I like a challenge any fan <laughs> to say that I say no. Maybe people around me when you're concerts, so say no, 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 that's mm -hmm. different. But like me you. saying no, that Not doesn't exist. I can't. I can't because I put myself into what they feel. Yeah. You know, so that's, that's, that's how I take care of my people, you know. Have you crossed paths with that person since that time? Uh, yes, of course. And and yeah. do you think they would take a picture with you now, with, with him now, if he asked? Hundred percent, two 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 hundred pictures he wants. That person would want two hundred pictures. No, you I will give him if he asks me for one. I'll be let's take two hundred. Really? Yeah. You wouldn't want to get even with him because he made your man feel. No, no, because. They might, they might have something inside them that is, they haven't forgive or something. I don't judge them. Yeah. I just think that there's something going on in their mind, you know? Like, like, I've been in the worst moments in my life and people ask me for pictures. I've, I've, been, I've been literally crying sometimes. I remember one day I was crying in the streets. I, was, I had a big loss and uh, I was crying in the streets, and 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 a fan said, like, "Can I take a picture with you?" And first I was like, "Is he crazy?" Like he he he, he's, he sees me crying. He sees me crying. But then I'm like, maybe he thinks he's never gonna see me again. You know. Yeah. Like, this is the only moment. Like, it's the only opportunity. Yeah. And I took the picture. I can't lie, it was uncomfortable. You know, it was uncomfortable because I was really, really crying, you know, sadly, deeply, you know, and, and he didn't care, but I don't know. There's people that doesn't have common sense or it's just, just like, this is my only chance, mm -hmm. you know.
Man, I can't imagine what type of moment that was, and I'm sorry for your loss, whoever yeah. that was. The documentary, A Boy from Medellin, is coming out on Amazon, and uh, I got a chance to watch it, and it's, it's special. It's, it's a really interesting look and perspective at you that the world hasn't seen yet. You did? You did you see it? Uh, yeah, I watched it. Have no, you seen real, it? For real, for real, for yes. real? Or, or you just... No, I literally watched the whole thing. Okay. Have you seen it? The of final? Course. I see. I, I, I watched it yesterday. Oh, for the first time? Yeah. It's great. Not, not for the first time, but they did some Twitch and I loved it. Okay. It's, How do you feel? How you feel about it? I loved it. I thought it was good. And there's a lot that I want to talk about in it because there were so many different elements to tackle. But the first one is that, you know, there's a lot of things that you do that surprise me. After the biggest concert of your life, you get in a G-Wagon <laughs> and you drive yourself home. I was confused. <laughs> you want to get a workout in and you go to a gym that anyone else can have a membership to. You're driving a motorcycle to your own rehearsals. It's, it's not what you would expect from a superstar. Why, why do you live this way? Listen, I, I was born in Medellin. I was born in 1985. Uh, at that time, uh, it was a really bad moment for our country with all the narco situation. You know, and uh, we learned a lot about whoever who flex, uh, that, yes, whoever that was flexing, it was kidnapped or killed, you know. And so as you start learning about the low key, how to be low key in your country, you know, and how, and then I start how understanding how how my country uh, works in 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 when it comes to protection, mm -hmm. you know, and it's simple. Just be nice with everybody. You know, they're gonna to just say, hello, how are you? Good morning, thank you. You know, like those details makes the whole difference. You know, I've seen people that were kidnapped or robbed in Colombia because they didn't say thank you to the wrong person, you know? So I started like learning how to live in that jungle at that time because it's not anymore like that, you mm -hmm. know? And um, I feel really protected. I don't have bodyguards. I don't like bodyguards. I don't like to be someone around me all the time knowing more about my life than, my own, than myself. Yeah. You know, um, I make my own protection. It's the way I behave with people, you know? If I have enemies and I'm making enemies, I know I have to have some bodyguards, you know. But if I'm doing the right thing, why should I be, you know? Like, yeah, of course, they put security when it, when it comes to concerts and public events, but it's not that I request for them. The event bring them, right? you know. But in Colombia, and wherever I go, yeah, as I told you, at whatever concert, they put security. It's not that I request for it. They, they just want to have that, you know. Uh, but in Colombia, I'm driving my motorcycle by myself. I'm in my car. I don't. I don't have a driver. You know. I just want to be me, man. Like I, I just. I just. And I'm. It's me all the time. Like at the end of the day, definitely, there's no difference between J Balvin and Jose. You know, because it's. I'm. I'm it's the same human being. Yeah. You know. And, uh, <coughs> but you're right. People ask me all the time when they, when they see me in the streets, like, where's your bodyguards? And I'm like, God? And they're like, oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> but listen, I have some stories. Uh, I remember one day being in the car and he knocked the door, the, 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 the window, and they pull up a gun. So I, I put the window down. I said, yo, give me everything. I was like, yeah. And there's some, like, no, 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 you're Jay, bro. Come, no, bro. 
he pulled out the he, he pulled out the gun, he took the gun down. He was like, bro, can I take a picture with you? <laughs> there was a gas station. And the other guy was like, bro, can we protect you? Can we make can we make sure, tell, can we make sure that you get where you want to get? The guys that wanted to rob me, they wanted they wanted to take care of me after they wanted to rob me. <laughs> And, and, they went, and they had a, a tank, a tent top, and I don't remember. And at that time I had a song that it was really a huge hit in, in, in Romania and Bulgaria, but in Colombia especially, called Tranquila. And he said, this tent top, I got it because of you. Like this vibe is because of you. And I was, of course, I was still shaking because that guy just pulled up a gun on me. Yeah. And, and, and then I understood that the power of music and the power of love you know, how it can change everything. And things like that have happened a lot of times. People just take care of me. Like sometimes, like, they, you know, when I'm in Medellin, some places, they're like, Maji, someone just crossing, like, you should leave. Something going on. And they're like, okay. You know, so they take care of me. Yeah. You know, but it's, it's all about the love you give to them, you know. So I feel more secure than, than anybody everywhere in the world when I'm in Colombia. What do you miss most about being Jose the painter? Uh, that time in your life, what do you miss the most about it? Uh, well, it's, it's a lot of things, you know. Uh, I miss the, 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 quality, the quality time that I had with my friends before, you know, now there are a lot of of them are married and got babies, things like that. Like I miss those moments. Uh, um, I've definitely done miss painting houses because I suck. <laughs> Shout out to my boss at that time. And uh, uh, but I keep dreaming, you know. So I, I, the way I was dreaming at that time is still the way I'm dreaming right now. You know, it just changed the level. Just, just in a different level. Okay. Oh, I guess not. It's do, you Be know. nice. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> <laughs> the, the dog is a fan of our conversation. That's his way of uh, like, applauding, you know? <laughs> Another thing that I was interested to find out about J Balvin is that he reads the comments on his Instagram. And when people have things to say, whether good or bad, you are receiving them. Yeah. Why do you do that? Sometimes I'm stupid. <laughs> Sometimes I receive the garbage that people have in their hearts and they throw in the garbage to anybody and I just receive it. I shouldn't because it's their garbage. It's not mine, you know? So it's funny because you normally, you see always the black spot on the white sheet. Mm -hmm. So I see like 200 positive comments and it's just one. And that's the one. It's like you. when you're in a concert and everybody's just vibing and you just go and you just see someone that is like this. <laughs> and I take it so personal, bro. I'm like, I got to make this guy move. Yeah. Like, he got to dance, you know, like. And everybody's vibing. I'm just looking at that guy like, what's up? <laughs> Put your hands up in the air, bro. Like, sometimes I want to be like, what the fuck? <laughs> Come on, so you're making me look bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that happened that happen on, on Instagram sometimes. Yeah, like, I do read my comments. There's, there's, there's definitely the dog is saying he's right. Yeah. Uh, I do, I do, I do read my comments. I, I, sometimes I answer back. Some, there's people sometimes that say some, some things that I just cannot write back. Because I have, a, like, a good punch back. You yeah. Know? Sometimes. You want to like, clap back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I, like, like that it go viral in, on the, reggaeton pages and all this stuff, you know, sometimes it's just like, okay, okay, they forget that, that we write songs. Right, I, I can write. I'm yeah, <laughs> so we actually are really, we're pretty fast when it's time to clap back. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so sometimes, you know, but I make <laughs> sure that I, that are like really epic ones. Yeah, but I, I, I shouldn't read them all. But sometimes you do, we all do, so. You, you know, we do, yeah. Yeah. You've, you've obviously accomplished so much in your life on a professional level and then on a personal level. Just out of curiosity, 
what has been or what is the best day of your life? I had a lot. The day Daddy Yankee uh, gave me an award as the new global icon because he was the one who inspired me. You know, it wouldn't be OJ Bobbin without Daddy Yankee. So the day, like, and I didn't know Daddy Yankee was going to give me the award. That, that I even, like, they told me they're going to give you an award. I was like, yeah, okay, thank you. I'm, you know, like, I'm grateful. It, it, they didn't tell me what was going to happen. And they told me, like, you get, just be ready. And uh, when Daddy Yankee shows up and be like, listen, I want to give you all my respect because we paved the way for what you're doing now and you're taking it to another level. You know, I saw that kid. I, 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 I saw my, I remember me watching Daddy Yankee on TV, you know, for the first time when I wanted to be like him. I was like, I wanna, I wanna be like Daddy Yankee. Like, I wanna be that guy, you know? And the day he gave me that and like, he said from icon to icon, you deserve this more than anybody else. I think that's one of my, one of my happiest days of my life because it makes my childhood, my dreams, as a human and as a professional, this is a day that I'm never gonna forget, you know. But let's see, let's gonna let's see what's next. Yeah. There'll be way happier moments. In the documentary, you see a lot of the struggles that you go through, mental yeah. health, personal challenges. So, like I just asked you, your best day. What has been the worst day of Jay Balvin's life? Worst days of the bad in life is when I had anxiety or depression. And when you have anxiety and depression, it's a chemical disbalance. You know, people think that being sad is being depressed. Nah, it's different. You know, sad is an emotion. You know, being depressed is a chemical disbalance that is more powerful than you. You know, like, you could be whoever. You could be the bad thing. You know, like, I gotta put my example. Yeah, people that some, some people be like, nah, he got the perfect life, everything is perfect. You know, and sometimes I wake up and I don't wanna wake up. And, uh, and I wanna die. You know, so I, there's days that I would like, what I'm doing in this planet, like, and, and I know it's not me, like, because I'm a warrior. And you have to be so, like, so humble to understand that there's some people that came with this, with a chemical disbalance that I, I never thought I'd want to have it. When I was a kid, everything was fine. And something happened in my life and I started getting panic attacks and then anxiety and, and, and depression, you know? And those are the worst days, you know, the days that you just don't see the light. Even if you have it, like right here, I see that light that is shining on me, right? You don't feel it. And even if someone tells you it's there, you don't see it because it's a chemical that's balanced. So that's what I take it so serious and that's what I talk about mental health a lot. You know how many lives, lives ha I have saved? Just because I, one day I post something about how I felt and, and, and I received calls of people like, Thank you, my, my, my kid didn't kill himself last time because he wrote, he wrote, he, uh, he read what you post on Instagram. That day my, my, my son wanted to kill himself and you give him light and your darkness. So that's why I take it so serious because it's, it's really, it's sad. You know, like I have seen a lot of, it's, it doesn't matter who you are. It's like what I told you with COVID. It's just like, it just it can kill you, it cannot. Same with anxiety and depression. It could kill you, it could not. Yeah. You know? So that would speak out about mental health because I think uh, it's something that a lot of people suffer, but they just don't. I want to encourage them to talk about it and, 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 and 
acknowledge that it's okay not to be okay. It's okay to not be okay, that's yeah. a fact. On a more positive note, the world just found out that J Balvin is going to be a father. Yeah. How do you feel about... I'm scared. Are you? What worries you? Like I'm gonna run away. <laughs> really? I'm scared. You know why I'm scared? Because sometimes I feel that I, sometimes I feel that I cannot pull up with myself. So how I'm gonna, you know, speaking of mental health and things like that, you know, sometimes and 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 like I don't want to see my I I, I want to give my kid the best of me. You know, when you're conscious, you know, and I don't want to and I don't want to transfer my fears to him. I don't want like. It's the more conscious you are, the more, the more um, responsibility you have, you know. So I'm like, I don't want my kid to see me with anxiety, you know, when that shit comes. I don't want my kid to see me with depression, you know. Like, so it's it, it scared me. It really scared me because I want my kid to be the happiest kid. You know, I don't want him to be rich. I don't want him to be a sperm. I want to. I don't want him to be an artist. I just want him to be the happiest kid, person alive. You know, there's someone. There's thing that they didn't taught. Like they didn't teach me when I was a kid. They always told me you should you should work hard and get money. You know, where well, I think you should work hard to be happy, you know? And that's what I want to teach my kid. Like, and he's going to live a different life anyway, you know? Like, he's not going to go through the things that I had to, you know? So, but at the same time, challenges are great for me because it makes me go out of my comfort zone, you know? But it, but it, I, can, I can't lie that it scares me because as I told you, sometimes I feel so vulnerable that I want to see my kid see me vulnerable yeah but maybe he's gonna be my best friend and maybe he's gonna really definitely and i want to be his best friend and maybe we're gonna grow up together and, and be just the best bodies you know i don't want to be the father i want to be his best friend yeah what type of father or best friend do you think that you'll be i'm the most loyal motherfucker that you can have <laughs> <laughs> i'm loyal man like I die for my people, you know, like there's, there's, there's a lot of parents, there's a lot of fathers, but I know there's a lot of sons that would not give their life for their fathers. I know there's a lot of friends that will give their life for their friends. That's a fact. You know, so I want to raise my, my best friend. You know, I want to be that, the, his best friend, because best friends are forever, you know, and they're going to make sure that you're okay in the bad and the good, and the goods and the bad. Sometimes when you act just like a father, you put in a, a like a, a barrier, a barrier, you know, and I don't blame them. It's just the fact that I have maybe more knowledge about, or I've been, or life just put me in a, in a certain information that I have learned about the people that I meet around the world, that I understand that, you know, like I never had the chance to talk with my parents about sex. Never. So I have to find out about myself, a lot of things. I never had that conversation and, 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 and I never, and I, I know I'm never gonna have it with my dad, you know? But when you're your best friend, you talk with your best friend about that. Right. Right? You're like, bro, I you know, I kind of feel this. I like this girl or I like this boy. I don't know what's gonna what's gonna be with my son. Whatever he wants to be, I'm okay with it. Okay? I wanna be his best friend. That's what I wanna be. You wanna have a relationship with your son that maybe you didn't have with your dad. Hundred percent. Yeah. Res saying that my dad raised me in the best way he could. And, and and with the information that he he did the best with the information that he had, 
you know, but I think that we have to make a better world and we gotta make sure that people have to be happy first and have big dreams, but be happy first. Happy first, like, that's like, should be a law. Should be a law? Yeah, like you have to be happy, you know, before you wanna be rich or wanna be successful. Mostly all the successful people, there's a lot of, there's a lot of the people that are really successful are really happy because they feel comfortable with, them, comfortable with themselves, mm -hmm. you know? But, you know, let's see. I think I'm gonna be, a, I'm, I'm gonna be a great dad, but I'm scared. I can't lie. I think you're gonna be a good dad too. And it's okay to be scared. I think that's okay. You said in the documentary that your soul doesn't accept the fact that you're growing up. I can't. Someone asked you how old you were and you accidentally told them the wrong age because you didn't even realize that you're growing up, but your soul won't accept it. Why? why what did you mean by that and, and why do you feel that way? I just, I don't know, man. Like, I'm still a kid. I'm, I'm, every little detail, every little thing makes me, you know, when, I'm, when the light, it's, it's on me, you know, talking about when my mental health is perfect, you know, I just enjoy every little thing, you know, like, like, this shit doesn't mean shit for me. It's just art. Right, but this doesn't make me. You know, the day I don't have these things, I'm still Jose. You know, because the day I don't have things, so I'm not gonna be Jose no more. Nah, I got it to be, you know, person. And and uh, so I'm always been a kid. You know, I think as a kid all the time. That's what I keep creating all the time. You know, and I enjoy every little detail and. And, and, and I just want to make people laugh. And um, sometimes I really, I'm really naive, you know, like a kid, you know, like kid trusts everybody, you know? I can me, yo, come on, let's go. Yeah, 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 let's go. You know, and like, and um, I just can't accept that I'm growing up, you know? And, uh, and, Bro, that's, that's, it's funny, you know, it's funny to me because my, I see my friends, you know, and, and they're looking like different as me. And I'm like, what happened with you guys? Like, <laughs> what's going on? That, that might happen with you. I mean, you might be, I see some of your friends that looks like way older. Yeah. Right? They were like, what's going on? <laughs> so, I don't know, man, I just have this, this, I'm, thir I'm a 13 years old guy trapping up in a man's body. A 13 year old in a man's body. Yeah, I'm but, still a kid. So you won't accept the fact, your soul won't accept the fact that you're getting older and I understand that because a lot of people feel that way. But based on what I saw in the documentary uh, and everything that you've been through, it seems like artistry and this world takes a big toll on you. In 2020, you even before COVID, you said that you weren't gonna tour at all. You wanted to take some time away. How much time do you think you have left in this game, in this music game? Ten. Ten years? Ten more years. That's, you have one percent that you can control. It's 99 percent that it's out there. It's not in our hands, you know, but I think as long as you keep connecting with the, with the youth and with the people, there's so many ways you can connect, you know? It doesn't have to be all the time music. It could be through fashion, mm -hmm. you know? Like with the sneakers or... Yes. Yeah, where I do a collab with guests or, where, you know, there's, there's definitely a lot of new collabs that are coming up, you know, and that are going to make statements. And, uh, and the cool thing that is on the first one, you know, when it comes to be Latino. My last question for you, in the documentary, you were chilling with some people that are very close to you. You were writing something down in this book. Mm -hmm. And somebody asked you, what is it? You said, it's my book of dreams. Yes. And you said, the crazy thing is that 99% of the stuff that's in your book of dreams you've accomplished. Yes. What is that 1%? Um, it's just the 
there, that one percent, I already accomplished. It just took me more time. But at that time, when I said 99 percent, because I had a dream that it took me more time, and I already made it. But now that we're sitting down, that one percent has been accomplished. Yes. What you, and what was it? No, I can't. <laughs> it's a secret. It's a secret. But it's a lot of dreams because, like, I divide my dreams by work, service, toys, kids' toys, right, things whatever. Yeah. yeah, toys, and my spiritual life. So I put dreams on each one. You know, like that way to try to keep a balance. balance. Yeah. Yeah. Because if I just focus on this, then I'm, yeah, you can be the most successful, but you can be the biggest asshole. So there's no balance in that, you know? So I have to just like balance everything out. So sometimes it's just like, I wanted to, you know, help someone or do something for someone. And maybe I couldn't make it at that time. But now you can. Yes, exactly. So what lane was that 1% thing in? That one was a professional one. That one was a professional like one. Like an accolade. Yeah, that, 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 one, that one was, yeah, yeah like uh, waiting for some numbers just to get what I wanted, you know, but what we accomplished and, 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 and I'm, rewriting my, I'm rewriting my dreams once again, you know. Still adding new dreams. Yeah, every year. Every year, you know, and and uh, because we were in the routine before 2020 starts, uh, I used to check them all the time, every day. Wake up in the morning, check, okay, we're doing this, I'm doing that. Plus I have a schedule, so I'm like, wake up at five, meditation, gym, read a book, you know, like, I was really disciplined with it, but when COVID got, then that discipline kind of went away because I wasn't moving to accomplish all those things. But now that, I, at least in this big bubble, it's, 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 you, it seems like you can make more things now. And what is the new, what are the new goals, the new dreams that you've been writing? New dreams, uh, you know, like redefine uh, reggaeton in a mainstream way. A new, f redefine it again, you know, uh, being a great dad, you know, uh, learn how to be happy once again with the simple things, you know, uh, knowing that health is wealth, you know, like uh, breaking some records that I want to break with some songs that I had. Uh, do again two stadiums in my country, not one, two, the same as, as the one mm -hmm. you saw on the, on, the, on the thing. You know, I want to be the first Latino in urban music to do the, the Met. The Met Gala. No, Met Gala, no, the Met Life Stadium. Oh, Met Life Stadium yeah. in New Jersey. Like, yeah, it's a lot of like, you know, I want to keep helping my country with what's going on with vaccines, you know, like there's a lot of dreams to accomplish, you know, so it's, it's service, it's, it's work, it's key toy, you know, things like that. You'll accomplish them all, I'm sure. Uh, we have, I mean, from the past, now it's time to rewrite New dreams. Yeah, and keep writing them. Yeah. Got to keep writing exactly. them. Exactly. And you just check, check them, them off. off. Yeah. One by one. Jay yeah. Balvin, I appreciate you taking the time, my brother. Thank you. My Thank G. you so much. Appreciate it, bro. For real.